I'm Mark Stafford. I'm a senior designer at LEGO and I work on the Superheroes team. The Daily Bugle is a building in New York City, so it's split into several different areas. It's like a comic book. The heroes are the focus at all times and the, the building itself is, is a background that includes everything you would expect to see in a comic book panel. So we've got the ground level with the street and that's where Sandman is coming out of the floor and Daredevil is fighting him and the awning over the doorway. Aunt May is arriving with wheat cakes for Peter Parker. And then the alleyways at the side have some broken boxes. If you move inside the building, there's a reception area with the security guard and Gwen Stacy's waiting there and there you can get cans of web juice from the machine in the atrium. And then up onto the next floor is the bullpen, the famous bullpen of the Bugle, where the reporters work. And then we move up to the next floor, and this is kind of a, an abandoned floor, and it's where Peter Parker has made his home. So there's some cobwebs and spiders, and there's old files and newspapers and a broken old photocopier and things like that, and Spider-Man sitting behind an old desk. And then we move up another floor, and that's the top floor, the penthouse. And there is J. Jonah Jameson in his office and Betty Brandt, his secretary. He's looking out his window at the fighting that's taking place of all of these superheroes and hating every moment of it, but at the same time looking forward to what he's going to put on the front page of the newspaper tomorrow. I'm also Mark, and I'm a graphic designer working on superheroes. So for the Daily Bugle set, we have a lot of new superheroes and villains. I also got to do a lot of the newspapers and the stickers that go in and around the buildings, such as the billboards on the outside, the newspapers that are up on the wall and placed in various areas of the Daily Bugle. There are 25 minifigures in this and many of them are superheroes and they're all having a great time. For the design of the figures we kind of wanted to keep a mix of various eras. So we have characters who are very iconic and it doesn't matter what era they are from. You'll find Carnage, who's 1990s and early 2000s character. And then we have Spider-Man himself from 1963 and Firestar from the 1970s. They all look right when you stand them next to each other, which means the graphic designers have nailed the superheroic look that's timeless. There are quite a few Easter eggs in the set. There's a couple of Oscars in Jade Jameson's office which represent the, the nominations Spider-Man's had um, and Into the Spider-Verse, a winning one. All of the characters have something regarding their backstory. So there's a magazine cover with Wilson Fisk, and that is Daredevil's arch nemesis. For Blade, we've got a reference to Morbius, because Blade is a vampire hunter, and we thought, what's he doing in New York? He was hunting Morbius, the living vampire who has been spotted on the subway. Well, there's more Easter eggs in the graphic design than there is in the model by far. It's, it's really nice stuff. There were a few surprises uh, along the way about what the Daily Bugle looks like. Because if you say to anybody, what does the Daily Bugle look like? And they're a Spider-Man fan, they'll probably have an image in their head. And it might be from the old Sam Raimi movies, or it might be from the video game, or the comic book. But whatever it is, I couldn't find two images that were the same anywhere that every artist has drawn it differently. It's an odd one when it comes to a building that, that everybody knows, but nobody knows what it looks like. There are a lot of interesting techniques in here. Like the taxi car was designed by Adam Grabowski, who's done lots of vehicles for the superheroes team, and there's nice little touches in there, little interesting builds. And then the building itself is an odd number of bricks wide which we wouldn't normally try to design an entire building like that. It means the alleyway on one side is five studs wide and on the other side is six studs wide and I had to deal with an even numbered doorway going into an odd numbered building and the whole model is an odd number all the way up. There was no single technique to solve that, it was lots of little issues to solve all the way through. From the very first sketch model, I decided Green Goblin had been in the building and had caught mayhem and flying through the window. And being able to build an exploding window with something flying through the middle of it, I'm, I'm incredibly happy. I managed to figure out how to do that and that our building instructions people managed to show how to build it. One of my favorite parts to the set is the little newsstand that's at the front. I think it's just a really cute little piece of New York. The whole model is a backdrop for the heroes and the villains. So I'm really happy with the way it came out. 